Thursday, the 31st of March 2016, Property Chat with Ken and James Hume. James, we've had a busy week this week, trying to meet the deadline with everybody. Um, as you're probably aware, stamp duty trebles for buy-to-let investors on the 1st of April, and uh, we've been busy trying to help our clients make that date, and it looks like all of them have got through apart from a couple. Uh, and so uh, thanks to all the solicitors and all the staff that helped us do that. So most people managed to uh, get under that deadline. And now, unfortunately, from tomorrow, 1st of April, an extra 3% for investor buyers, but there we are. We've got some other news as well on buy to let landlords, James. Um, yeah, the Bank of England are proposing to have restrictions on landlords um, in buy to let. Yeah, it's interesting because um, it always seems that they're um, throwing the hammer at a landlord in one way or another, doesn't it? Yeah. And yet again, we find a, a reaction from the Bank of England this time saying that they need to restrict buy to let lending and they want to look at the amount that landlords can borrow and also they want to check the financial background and wherewithal of the landlords not just for the property but in the wider sense and the reason they want to do that is because they're worried that a bubble is being created which is quite ironic when you think that actually the reason there's been such a bubble is we're all trying to get in before that deadline on the 31st of March James. Well, yeah, obviously it's not ideal how they kind of closed in on buy to let landlords in the first place. No, and I think that they're right to feel kind of targeted in a way. Um, but, you know, there's an old adage that if the government know you've got it, then you haven't. And it seems to be one of those cases where um, there's been a lot of drive towards making more monies from landlords and actually in some cases scaring landlords away from the sector. But there is a flip side, of course. Uh, a lot of landlords are selling up and that does mean that there'll be a restricted supply uh, and that will increase rents, not the solution that the government were looking for, but it looks like the way it's going to go. Yeah, I mean, it could affect, obviously, the renters quite a lot. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think that, you know, it, it's interesting to see now that almost half of people in their late 30s think it unlikely they'll ever own a property, looking at a recent headline in The Telegraph. Um, it's quite sad, really, and quite frustrating to think that we got there. But unfortunately, with rents as crazy as they are, especially in London, it's very, very hard for people to see a way in and the more restrictions and the heavier deposit that's required the harder it is for young people to get in hopefully the one outcome of the new stamp duty rules will be to level the playing field uh, slightly more in the sense that young people like yourself james when you're competing with buy to let investors they've got to find the extra three percent that you haven't yeah. still not an easy hurdle to climb to get the initial five or ten percent deposit on london prices but it certainly you know, levels the playing field a little in that sense. And I do think that was part of the government's intent as well. Well, yeah, obviously the buy to let lenders have obviously been winning the race a bit because it's a bit harder for the yeah, first definitely. time buyers to get They in. have, they have, and it does seem a little unfair. Um, but you know, buy to let versus first time buyers, the problem as an agent we have, as you know, James, is that you know, buy to let investors tend to have larger deposits. They've often done it before. Also, we're in a situation where the maintenance, uh, you know, things like a little bit of damp, which might scare away a first time buyer, a seasoned buy to let investor that's got several, probably wouldn't be worried about that. So, you know, the likelihood of the deal going through is that much greater. The likelihood of any monies being withheld as a retention is less because the deposit is higher with a buy to let investor. So hopefully this will go some way towards levelling the playing field and helping young people get onto the property ladder. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's hopefully what it's meant to do. So. Yeah, and I noticed the Qataris are making a mark in Mayfair. Apparently, research from a company called Roxton shows that Qatari investors now own £1 billion worth of property in London's Mayfair. That's probably a couple of garages there, but nonetheless, it sounds like quite a lot of property. And uh, that's interesting. I, I've mentioned before that uh, we've got some contacts in Mayfair who were saying to me that you know one of the surprise buyers in Mayfair right now are Syrians. You know, we see the refugee side of it, but actually there's a lot of money out there as well. And it got me thinking about you know, the, the gold bullion effect of, of war zones. You know, when your country is in trouble in the old days, you know, the, the, the standard was gold. You know, when everybody's fighting and you don't know which currency to rely on, what you could always rely on was a bar of gold. Uh, but now with the fluctuations in the price of gold, property's really the new bullion of the modern day. And, and central London is one of the most secure places to put your money, arguably. Uh, and therefore a lot of people have done this and it then ends up with a frustration of the higher level buyers who should be buying in central London such as you know the high level bankers and lawyers that would normally afford Mayfair and Chelsea are being pushed out to the fringes but there is a positive effect from that as well and that is the fringes are getting more professional people in and getting a nicer environment in many ways you know you're finding more coffee shops you know more of the kind of cafe culture and you know everyone's the whole of London kind of ripples out in this way um, it's quite an interesting thing but it's certainly the way that London's been going for years now and uh, the Qataris making their mark there will no doubt 
make it happen even quicker. <coughs> the other thing to say is that, of course, we've got the European election approach, or well, not the European election, sorry, the European vote for whether we're in or out of Europe is approaching in June. Um, and the effect of that may be prevarication. I think a lot of people are scared of what the impact might be if we come out of Europe. Um, I mean, I'm pretty neutral on whether we should be in or out generally. I have to say for property, I think the favoured result's probably in because we know what in means. Yeah, I mean, obviously we all know what it means being in the EU, but I don't think anyone really has a clue. Exactly. I mean, everyone can guess, but I don't think anyone really has a real idea of what this impact this is going to make on the property market. So Yeah, definitely. Find out. I think that's right. And I, I think because we don't know, there will be a tendency for some to hold back and not make buying decisions. So it could have an impact on the market. If we stay in, I think people will see it as business as usual and the property market will continue probably apace. If we come out, there may be a period of uncertainty um, and that could affect the market uh, for the rest of the year. Yeah, just from being scared really, I suppose. Is, is Absolutely. That what it is? Just to yeah. Kind of so, you know, the sun's out. We've got lots of property that's come on the market of quite high quality, haven't we, James? Quite a good degree yeah, of no, stock. Yeah, we've got uh, quite a lot of stock on at the moment, obviously. Everything's been flying through because of the new uh, taxation, but... Yeah, definitely. Well, thanks for watching and listening. And uh, do us a favour, if you like the video, then please do press the like button because that makes us feel good and um, we're glad you could join us. Thanks.